Good afternoon and welcome to my daily chat. <laughs> this is episode number 952, I think it is, right, so the title. Um, topic today is, has the, uh, sorry, I was going to say, has your new car smell faded? What I was joking with is that the new year smell faded. And what I mean is, have you sort of got over the new excitement and now it's a week and a bit later, are you feeling a bit disillusioned or uh, underwhelmed? Because if you are, maybe you've like, thought you're gonna have it really run rampant, 2020 is gonna be an amazing year, it's all gonna be great, and it's already starting to feel like, oh shit, it's not such a good year. If you're feeling anything like that, and maybe you're not ready for feeling like that, maybe you're avoiding it like now, I have some things that might help you with that. The, the reality of the new year is it sets up a lot of expectations for most people. Um, there's something about the new year's like a clean slate. Like last year was good and done with, good riddance, goodbye, whatever it was, if it was a bad year, or that was pretty good if it was a good year. And then it's like a new year happens and we go, okay, clean slate, let's start over. It's not quite so easy. In fact, it's not quite so, <laughs> it's not quite so real. Unfortunately, most people in, in this um, world we live in, to want for a better word, have set up almost because we were trained that way by society that the new year, same as many other times of the year, are specific designations of transformation and change. Particularly new year, because other times, I mean, some people think about Easter that way, some people think about Christmas that year, some people about July 4th, Thanksgiving, there's all the different things along in the year which are um, markers of things. I mean, the next one comes up for all the people is Valentine's Day. I'm not gonna talk about that one yet. I have a whole bunch of stuff to talk about that one soon, so stay tuned for that. But with the new year in particular, because it is a pivotal point, and even though um, planetary things like eclipses and alignments and um, retrograde stuff like that doesn't necessarily happen on New Year's Day, in fact, really does apparently from what I've read, it seems like we put up a lot of assumption about the New Year being a pivot point, but necessarily, but isn't necessarily that so. However, however, sorry, just, something just hit me as I was saying this, so I stopped in the middle of it. We have power, autonomy, authority over our life. Yes, you do. Same as I do. We all do. That might be like, you, we do what? <laughs> I got more to talk about that in a moment. But the thing is, because we have dominion and we have autonomy over our life, if nothing else, in how we feel in our lives, because some situations may not be under our control at this moment, but in simple terms, we have a lot of um, authority and power over our attitude, and how we feel about things, because that's all internal. We can change that any time we want, if we choose, if we choose. Um, in fact, there's a book, classic book out by Viktor Frankl, which is Man's Search for Meaning, where he talks about this, when he was in the prison camps in the Second World War, how it felt and how we could change his attitude to shift his energetic feel. So first of all, the New Year has power because in the New Year experience, we tend to carry along this ability to um, shift our energetic, shift our focus, shift our belief structure even from December 31st to January 1st. There's a however coming. Let's see if I get to that in a moment. So we have this energetic ability to shift our feelings, shift our beliefs, which actually is an amazing amount of power. That's the, the this, okay, <laughs> 17 things at once. What do I want to try and say first? Hmm, okay. First of all, and I talked about this before, we tend to get in our, our <laughs> of course, an English quote to get our knickers in a twist <laughs> or our panties in a twist when somebody doesn't do something we want so that's a whole codependent thing I could talk about another time but bottom line is this is that we have the power to transform our feeling internally for many of us we think we can transform our, we, we get our feelings affected by what other people do or don't do for example if you watch the news the last few days you might have felt yourself out of whack upset, hurt feelings by something somebody else did that has no relationship to you directly Yet you, yet you may not, I'm not going to say you don't, but you may not remember that you can do as actually more impact of your own feelings internally than anybody else can. So first of all, let's talk about taking your power back as a New Year's resolution or a New Year's intention, excuse me. I'm not going to get <laughs> resolutions. No, 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 no resolutions. <laughs> it's like, no, no resolutions. So <laughs> I'll get that in a moment too. So the fact you have autonomy over your feelings is the first lesson I'm going to give you right now because this is something that deeper level people get is that you have full autonomy over your feelings. 
you may not know how to do it, and maybe you've been trained, because our culture does this, to believe that other people have more power over your feelings than you do, which is bull stuff. <laughs> you have full autonomy over your feelings. But do you actually own it? Do you claim it? Do you, do you um, take charge of that? Because if you do, then what happens in the world is not as relevant to you as what happens internally. And what happens internally is under your dominion, not in reaction to what happens out in the world. It's the other thing, by the way. So response versus reaction is a big shift in the cultural things. I'm, I'm giving you like five teachings here, so you're welcome. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a good deal. So first of all, you have dominion over your feelings. Secondly, actually, which second piece do I want to give? God, there's so much just came up. It's like, okay, this, 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 this. Now, basically, by the way, oh yeah, codependency. I talked about codependency a lot in my talks because I'm very passionate about letting people rem remem helping people remember that codependency is, is not required. Especially in a relationship. Now, I've done relationship talks for a while because I've been shifting in my messaging in case you've been following me along for the last few months. That's why I've got three, and a half, three plus years worth of talks. I've been primarily about love and relationships. And a large part of that is to stop the trap of codependency that most people fall into. And I certainly did. I, I exhibited codependent traits for many years. So it's not something unusual. Frankly, when you realize that you have the power to have your dominion of your own feelings and the other people's reactions, responses, attitudes, comments, thoughts, activities towards you are nothing to do with you, but everything to do with them, you start to notice there's a, a shift or, a, or a, a gap forms. And that gap is between what they do and what you choose to respond with or not. But for most of us, we've been set into a place of normal as, as a... As a um, an auto-responder, so in a way, I'm using some from, tech, from um, mailing, but automatic response, because when we're in a relationship with other people, especially romantic relationships, family ones as well, by the way, we have this tendency to have a default response when somebody does something that we don't even think about. So autopilot happens. And when you remember that that happened and you go, let me change that. When you start bringing your um, investment in other people's feelings back into yourself, and you invest in your own feelings rather than somebody else's, then you discover that you have autonomy. And right? then you discover you have authority to choose yourself how you respond or don't even respond. So that, that reaction mode, that default, that autopilot you've been running under gets turned off. Yes, you have choice in this. It's not automatic. You may have gotten to the place where you're, you're going autopilot because it's just a default habit you run to be codependent that way, but you can break the habit. So that's one thing I want to give you right now. That's a big you just apply that piece, you'll change your life completely. So you're welcome. Second piece I want to talk about, though, is getting back to the New Year piece for a second, because that's another thing, is that now the New Year's been going for a week and, what's, what's it, the, it's the ninth today, so it's a week and a day. Whoopee, a week and a day into the New Year. So things that, so you may have had really great excitement on New Year's Day and New Year's Eve, getting ready for the New Year, you're going to kick some butt, make some patterns, take some names, etc., etc. <laughs> However, at this point, being eight days later, nine days later, you may be going not feeling it. Maybe it's sort of worn off. Maybe you got back into the routine. Maybe you went back to work and you're feeling like, oh, here we go again. And you're not feeling any shift. Or maybe you're just simply thinking that something's going to show up and help you. Well, what I'm going to offer may help you, by the way. So just let you know ahead of time. But as I said earlier, we have autonomy. We have the authority. And I don't mean like ego. I'm talking about we have um, ownership of our own feelings. So if you're not feeling like the new year is going the way you want, you can change that internally. The second part is to change how things have been going since the new year. If it's not going the way you want, it sounds silly, is do something different. Yeah, maybe drive a different route home. Maybe you don't go to the same gym you went to. Maybe you're doing something different in terms of your commitments to yourself. Now, I did a whole bunch of talks about resolutions that suck. <laughs> I should say I did, did a bunch of talks about resolutions sucking. And I gave you some alternatives, in fact, four keys to help you not do resolutions, but do something much more powerful, more effective. If you want to go search the broadcast now, I'll tell you at the end of the broadcast where you can find the replay so you can go find them. Um, and I'll put the, I'll put the um, episode numbers in the comments afterwards so you can find them that way too. Because if you understand how to set up your life differently, rather than do resolutions that tend to die in the second week, like now, then you might discover there's a new way of living, a new way of expressing, a new way of succeeding you never had before. So that's another bonus there. Two gifts right now, not bad. All right, now I'm going to tell you about something else because I want to tell you about this invitation because this is, I mean, New Year's actually the perfect time for me to launch this because this is what so many people are dealing with. It's having challenges with 
what they want to have happen and what's actually happening. And they're two different things and it's not really working out for them. When you understand, first of all, you have autonomy over your feelings, first thing I talked mentioned, and you start discovering that you don't, you can actually set up things in motion that are more heart-centered, heart-based, heart-driven, for the sake of a better way of saying it, then you start discovering a whole new way of being in the world. And then that New Year's smell that's worn off will be renewed again. I, mean, I'm joking, I, think, I was thinking about New Year, New Year smell, hence why I said New Year smell. It was, yeah, you may not have landed. If you got it, great. If you didn't, my apologies. <laughs> But my point I want to say is if you're thinking about transforming your life and you're not choosing to align yourself with something, somebody, some training, some group, some organization that will help you transform, it can be hard to do. If you join a mastermind, that can be a powerful way. If you join some seminars, read some books, do some trainings, go to retreat, anything like that can help you. Now, I'm personally biased about what I'm offering because what I'm offering is basically a, a group support, mastermind, masterclass, all the above combined, a three-month journey called BFF. Now, I know people think BFF means best friends forever. That's the side effect. Yes, the side effect of being in the course because you'll discover that for yourself. Yes, in the mirror. But BFF in my masterclass is balance, freedom, and flow, which are three components to lead you to three components that will enable you to have fulfillment in what you want, what you want to have, and how you want to be. This is the perfect, I think, now I'm being biased, just to be clear, the perfect way to launch your new year in a whole new paradigm. And it's not too late to do it. It may be the 9th of January, <laughs> but it's still more time to do it. So I want you to, to check out the link I'll put in the comments afterwards, or you want to go straight there now as I'm talking. If you go to barryselby.com forward slash BFF, you can read about it and sign up right there. And if you have questions about it, message me over social media or, or uh, reach out to me and let's have a talk. I want to help you clarify if this fits for you. If it doesn't fit for you, no problem. But if you really want to get this new year started the right way, and it hasn't happened yet, because it's been nine days and nothing changed, I am strongly encourage you, one, to watch those four other broadcasts, so those four other broadcasts that work for you. Secondly, check out my BFF course. It's a masterclass. It's a, it's a mastermind, group support, accountability. It's a lot of things. But check it out and have a look, because I think you'll find it will work for you. So I've given you like four components for how to start your new year right plus the four I mentioned last week, which I'll give you the links for in the comments. So that's giving you eight things, eight things, maybe seven things to start with to transform your experience from what you've been, um, what you wanted to what you can have. So you're welcome. <laughs> so take a look, have a, have a, take a look at my BFF offering. Also check out the link in the comments I'll put afterwards. I'll put the numbers of the broadcast in the comments of the four broadcasts I mentioned, which are the four components to actually transform your experience from resolution to much more successful. But definitely so if you're starting to focus on how other people think of you, how you feel when other people treat you, that's a trap that I've walked into too many, many times and I teach people how to break that one. If you're stuck with that one, message me as well. So I've given you like a smorgasbord of things to choose from. Um, so I hope this helps you. I hope you take this to heart. And I hope you start getting to understand that this year could be amazing still. In fact, even more so now because you watch this broadcast. So break the codependent cycle. Reset your ability to feel for yourself and choose for yourself and uplift your own heart and check out my BFF Masterclass. All those things will transform your life for the better and there's a lot more besides that. By the way, the four things I mentioned, the four, bro the four broadcasts from last week, yes, last week, I'm from what days they're on, are just the beginning steps of what BFF includes. So if you watch the broadcast and you get value from them, you want to check out BFF. Again, barryselby.com forward slash BFF, the link will be in the comments. I do strongly encourage you to check it out because I know it will help you transform your life to what you want. Make 2020 an amazing year and beyond and start the right way with my course. I know I'm being biased. I mean, I've been talking about this for now for two weeks because it is, it's basically, as I said before, it's 30 years of my study, my teaching, my learning distilled into a three month, 24 seven support system. You will definitely benefit from it. All right, so if you haven't seen my broadcast before, and by the way, I did mention those three, other, those four other broadcasts, this is where you're going to find the replays. First of all, if, I go, if you haven't seen me before, I do this live every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. If you haven't seen my broadcast before and you want to watch the replays, you can go to my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, and watch most of them there, at least the last 100, 150, 200 there. So you can watch the ones I talked about. But again, as I said before, Facebook doesn't store them all there in a way that you can see. 
even though all of them are in Facebook somewhere, they show up in, their, in my um, history every, every year. But if you want to watch all my broadcasts or search through for my early broadcasts, because some of them are kind of, kind of interesting being my early broadcasts, it's much more professional now. <laughs> well, you get, to, you, you get to judge that. Um, if you go to my, <laughs> my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, please subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there, which is called Messages for the Masculine. And there's all my broadcasts are there, including this one when I, when I upload it. So you can search through by keywords, search through titles, and find what you're looking for to give you the inspiration, guidance, and insight that you may be looking for to help you have more love, more joy, and more success in your life. You're welcome, once again. I highly encourage you to check out BFF. I'm very biased about it because it works. Well, no, not as so much it works. It will transform your life if you're willing to transform it yourself. So with that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel, and I appreciate you being with me as always. Um, if you have a question about this broadcast, reach out to me. If the BFF course inspires you, if you get some questions, message me, reach out to me, let's talk. I'm here to support you, help, help, here to help you guide your life into what you want to have and to have an amazing year coming forward. It ain't over yet. It may be the second week, but we're still going and there's much more to come. Be ready for a transformational experience because this year can be amazing and I can help you with that. So once again, thanks for watching. I will see you again tomorrow. And as always, as a reminder, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow.